Welcome to this tutorial. Today I will be explaining how you can use Microsoft 3D Builder in collaboration with iMaterialize, our online 3D printing service. To get you started, head over to the opening screen, where you can see different options. On the one hand, you can start your 3D printing journey with an empty workspace. Or on the other hand, you can use the Load Model button to select an existing 3D geometry if you're feeling lazy. You can also turn a 2D image into a 3D object. I'll show you how this option works later in the tutorial. The camera allows you to turn a 2D photo into a 3D object, which is similar to the Load Image functionality. Your final option is to scan an existing object and turn it into a 3D model. You can start off with one of the models from the library. You can select models from the Featured section, Toys and Gadgets, Train Set, Trophy Parts, Household, Miniatures and Letters, and Numbers tab. I'll now start from scratch with a new scene to show you the basics. In the center of your screen you will see the 3D workspace, and then on the right side of the screen you will see an option to select and group models, as well as the item list and material list. You can find the menus on the top left of the screen. The main menu shows you the options for opening, saving, 3D printing, printing on paper, and the account and settings can be found at the bottom. In settings, you can set the unit size you would like to work in. Millimeters are selected now, but you can set it to centimeters or inches if that works better for you. I'll continue in millimeters. The insert menu allows you to insert a geometry or shape into the scene. You can pick one of the standard shapes, or feel free to load existing 3D or even 2D files. If you look at this menu, you can select the file you would like to import. Similarly to the opening screen, you can choose to load a mode, image, or use a photo from the camera. I will be starting with a basic cube shape. First of all, let's inspect our cube by using the mouse. Click left and drag to rotate the view. Use the scroll to zoom in and out. And you can use a right click drag to pan. As you might have noticed, these actions don't change the geometry itself, only the view. In the next action, we will change the location, orientation, shape and size of your model. In the center at the bottom of your screen, you can take a look at the different options for editing your model. You can translate or move your part by clicking and dragging one of the arrows on it and moving the mouse. Alternatively, you can enter a value in the field below and press accept. You can rotate your model by clicking on the middle button on the menu. The rotation can be done in a similar way, which is by clicking and dragging one of the arrows or entering a value. Scaling an object can be done by clicking and dragging or entering a value. The value is linked to the arrow that is highlighted. To scale your object proportionally, you need to make sure that the lock is on. This means that the proportions of your model are locked in place. There is also an option to rescale your object without locking the proportions. All you have to do is click on the lock symbol. This will release the connection between the different dimensions of your object and allow a disproportionate rescale. In order to help you modify your part faster, there are some more options in the object menu. The model you select will be copied. Once you have selected a model, you can left click on another object and the part will be added to your selection. When you double click on an object, it will only select the specific object again. If multiple models are selected, you can perform edits on the selected items at the same time. 
As you can see, I am now translating both cubes. Now you can delete the selected object. You can also use the delete key on the keyboard to do this. If you get lost in your workspace, you can click center view to reset the view with the selected object in the center. Settle is a functionality that checks the stability of your object. As you can see, my cube is pretty stable as it can stand without falling down. The mirror function will mirror your object. This comes in handy if you need a left and right version of something. In Edit, you will find the option to simplify, split, smooth, emboss, extrude downwards, merge, intersect and subtract models. Split will allow you to cut your object according to a given plane. You can set the position and angle of the plane by dragging or entering its values. You can decide which part or parts you would like to keep after the slip operation by selecting one of the options on top and clicking OK. These options are for if you would like to do a Boolean action on a set of models. This will add two models or more together. You will see on the right hand side that the items list currently only shows one object. Let's undo that by pressing Ctrl Z and looking at the other boolean options. Now the items list shows two items again. It will cut away the overlapping part of two models. This results in one item on the list again. After undoing my actions, I'll reposition the part to show the intersect action. It will detect where the two models overlap and keep that intersection. With this result, you can again use the editing options in the middle of the screen, such as rescale and so on. Back to the cube shape. Now I will show you how the smooth option works. The name is fairly self-explanatory, as the smooth tool will smoothen your model. It also rounds off objects, as you can see with the cube I smoothed. To reduce the amount of triangles in your model, you can use the simplify action. As you can see, this will result in sharper edges on your model. You can experiment with both smooth and simplify to morph your shape. Next up is the emboss feature. It's a great little feature which enables you to add text, signs or symbols to your object. First you type your text in the field. The text will be updated in the 3D view. Now I'm going to scale it to the right size. You can also rotate the text on the model and choose the exact location on the model. Also, the height of the letters can be defined by dragging or entering a value in the scale option. You can also select a contour instead of text. There are different ways of projecting your text or contour onto the existing surface. If the target surface is planar or close to planar, it's best to select planar projection. If the surface is cylindrical or spherical, you can select those projection methods for a better result. If the preview looks good to you, click OK. Over by the material menu, you can change the appearance of a model by changing its color. You can choose predefined colors or choose a specific color for your model by clicking the color you want. Let's empty the workspace and load an image. I want to select the silhouette image of a trumpet player. You can go over the different options to see what fits your needs best. In this case, I will use the contour method. I'm inversing the object to have a positive shape and then clicking OK. For regular pictures, other methods might work better.
Let's try out the I Materialize mascot, our very own Pigwin. As he is currently lying on his back, I'm going to rotate him and put him in an upright position with the translate functionality. Now I will add a part from the library or trophy area. Let's position it below the penguin with a translate. And rescale the base to match the size of the penguin. finish up, I'll add a text to the base. In the top right corner, you can find the 3D print button, which you can also find in the main menu. Click the button to prepare your model for printing. In the menu, you will have to set the printer to 3D printing service. In the layout tab, you can inspect your model and modify the size of your model before uploading it. By clicking the order online button, you will be redirected to the iMaterialize 3D printing service website where you will be able to select the material, color and finish for your project. Browse the different options, see the price offers and once you are happy with your choice you can press the add to cart button. Then your project will get printed by us and all you still need to do is wait for your print to be delivered right to your doorstep. And that's all there is to it! I hope you learned something new. Stay tuned for more tutorials on imaterialize.com.